Hello everyone, Wolfie here. I hope you're all doing well. My previous video, Fluffy Guide to Boomkins, actually scored a point and I see it as an absolute win. I managed to present you a boomy in a way to make you actually like it and pursue the fun side of it. In today's World of Warcraft, we are getting bombarded about every negative side of this beloved MMORPG. It is perhaps Blizzard's mistake with all the changes they did or didn't do, but we gotta start from ourselves and notice what we are actually doing to help or to make it even worse. Anyway, that is a talk for the other time. Today, however, we are continuing with our guide through the biggest, most complex and ultimate class ever. <sighs> we gotta resurrect him first. Our friend here, let's call him Groove. Anyway, Groovy Groove is the second possible spec of a druid, where majority of talent points are spent in Restoration 3, 50 to be exact, in order to pick all the talents that are essential for rest of druid gameplay. Other 11 points can be left unspent even if you're going to stay in tree form and just grew. There are two ways of spending the remaining 11 points, depending on your preference. First one is the insect's form tree, which allows you to use insect's form of course, and the second one is the feral tree. Each has its strong sides. Insect's form tree is a nice for raids in which you are lacking boomkin, or boomkin died or is oom, um, etc. And feral tree is nice for quickly shapeshifting and interrupting spellcast on the mob. Both are useful in solo play, farm or daily questing, so it's totally up to you how you want to play. If you have any questions about why I took this one and not that one, feel free to ask in the comments, I'll answer each and every one. I appreciate all of you. As for stats or what Groot likes, it's mainly healing power and spirit, since Rastu Druid is relying mainly on HOTS, healing over time. Life bloom, rejuvenation and regrowth all benefit directly from flat healing power. As for spirit, it comes in play with giving a lot of passive MP5 and in combination with tree form where healing done to party members that have the aura is increased by 25% of Groot's total calculated spirit. After these two, anything else is welcome, such as intellect, stamina, etc. Towards the end game, you will want to go for more and more haste. It's gonna be easy cause you will want to gem only healing power, so go for items that have a bunch of haste on it already. So following the previous talk about focusing on healing power, you can guess what kind of consumables are best for Groot. No, not the best repellent. Well, maybe. Golden fish sticks are best go-to food, but second best would be any food that gives stamina and spirit. Elixir of healing power and elixir of draining wisdom is best in slot combination. Flask is not as good, but if you decide to go with it through progression, then go with the flask of mighty restoration. Common misconception is that haste potion is increasing casting speed. This is incorrect, don't fool yourself. Or a major dreamless potion, yeah sure it's nice, but only when solo farming or questing so you can put your roots in the ground and sleep for a whole 12 seconds. Dude, never use it in a raid or a dungeon. Potions that you should go for are super mana potion and alternatively mad alchemist potion, which has the profession requirement, but I'll talk about it in a minute. Lastly, the weapon oil is brilliant mana oil or alternatively superior mana oil. Anything else is extra and welcome, such as scrolls of spirit and runes. Why should Groot be in your raid? Firstly, because you need a versatility in healing setup. Resto Druid is high HPS and sustainable healer spec that can turn things around if goes south during a bad pull. It has higher survivability and average DPS output than other clothed healers in the raid. Above all that, it brings all the goodies that druids can do. I talked about it in my previous video, Bumpkin the Fluffy Fury, you're more than welcome to check it out. I'll just list down a few. In a raid buff, battle res, entangling roots, cyclone, abolish poison, thorns, leakers, and so on. One R druid per raid is a must, but two is an awesome party. When I first started playing a tree, I was overwhelmed by keeping the hots up on more than two targets. But I got into rotation fast and it became one of my favorite healing classes in the game. Priority of healing spells goes like this. 3 life blooms, 1 rejuvenation and then regrow spam if needed. It can vary on different occasions, but that's the basic one. As for healing touch, you can nicely delete it off your action bars. Replace it with nature swiftness plus top rank of healing touch macro for oh shit moments. Lastly, I'll mention swiftman and tranquility. Tranquility is one of a kind AoE very strong spell that is designed to heal your party a bunch. With it keep your other healers alive or your tank party, depending where you are. But Tranquility is a druid spell, not just restoration. Swiftman on its own is not a heal, but as a tooltip says it will consume your hot for instant healing on your target. If there is a hot on your target of course. 
So how do you do rotation? In the dungeon, keep 3 life blooms on your tank and regrowth if he dips. When the tank is taking a lot of damage, for example on big pulls or boss tanking, keep 3 life blooms, rejuvenation and spam regrowth. Swift meant only if you feel the tank might die while you're casting another regrowth. For DPSers, regrowth here and there if they pull aggro. In raid, get raid frames or life bloomer add-on which will track your hots for you on your UI. Keep 3 life blooms on all 3 tanks, or 2 depending how many is there. In case of a bigger pool, put rejuvenation and then just do regular regrowth where needed. In raid with enough haste you can do some raid healing as well. For example putting 1 or 2 life blooms on a class that constantly either take damage or you can expect it to take damage. Like for example Retribution, Seal of Blood, Shadow Priest, Shadow of War Death, Warlock's Life Tap and so on. Let's quickly go through all the gear suggestions as pre-raid beast pieces. Headpiece, White Man Hood, Tailoring Crafted. Necklace, Carrier's Medallion from Mana Forge Ara Quest as an Aldor. Shoulders, Primal Moonclaw Shoulders, Tailoring Crafted. Cloak, Avian Cloak of Feathers, Talon King Aikis, in Setak Halls. Chest, Primal Moonclaw Robe, Tailoring Crafted. Bracers, Bindings of the Time Walker, Keepers of Time Exalted. Gloves, Gloves of the Living Touch, Leatherworking Crafted, BOE Item. Belt, Primal Moonclaw Belt, Tailoring Crafted. Pants, White Man Pants, Tailoring Crafted. Boots, Slippers of Serenity, Exarch, Maladar and Ashen Eye Crypts Heroic. Ring 1, Ring of Fabled Hope, Black Stalker from Anderbog Heroic. Ring 2, Ancestral Ring for Horde, Tralmar Revered, otherwise Double Fabled Hope. Trinket 1, Essence of Martyr, Badge of Justice Fender for 41 Badge. Trinket 2, Lover City Prayer Book, Lover City Revered Reputation. Main Hand, The Hand of Eternity, Blacksmithing Crafted, BOE, or Gladiator Salvation if you like PvP. Otherwise, you can go with Shockwave Trancheon from Murmur in Shadow Labs Heroic. Offhand, Wind Colors Orbs, Naran Expedition, Revert Level of Reputation. Idol, Idol of Emerald Queen Ambassador Halma in Shadow Labs. These are more of guidelines on what you should go for if you are stuck somewhere. But as we are already several weeks into TBC, Terrifor Raids will be giving you items that are good enough substitutes for expensive craftable items. As a healer spec, I suggest to go with tailoring primarily for all the gear pieces you need to get for yourself. And as a second profession, go with alchemy if you got alt with herbalism. Alchemy would be beneficial in more than one way. Mad Alchemist Potion is a cheap to make, and with Alchemy Trinket, it will keep you sustained in longer fights. Your endgame Alchemy Trinket will be your best in slot. Another possible profession could be Enchanting, for example. Gemming Growth is fairly easy, as I mentioned earlier, just gem teardrop living ruby into everything, you won't make mistakes. In case you use a headpiece with a meta gem socket, then go for Bracing or some Diamond. Ancient wise, go with Honor Old and Thralmal Glyph of Renewal, and I suggest picking Aldor for the Shoulder Ancient. Major Spirit for Chest, Superior Healing for Bracers, and Major Healing for Gloves. Major Healing on Weapon, Door Speed or Vitality on Boots, Golden Spell Thread on Pants, and lastly, if you pursue Enchanting, go for Healing Power on the Rings. It is really good. And before I forget, here are the few macros you can use and want to be groovy. If you don't want to get Bart Beetles, break the like button and root yourself into my sub button. That covers it for this video, hope it helped out a lot. As usual, stay safe and have fun playing the game. Until the next video, bye bye!